Hey peeps, 2D projectile motion scenario three. Okay, the scenario three involves an asymmetric kind of situation. Here's what I mean by that. So we've got um, a projectile from a platform or a cliff in this case. Um, it's a croquet ball and it's hurled with a velocity of 20 meters per second, an angle of 60 degrees. And we want to find out um, how far away from the cliff the ball lands and splashes into the water. Okay, cliff is 30 meters high. So here we go, the ball is going to go up and in this um, parabola type shape and end up in the water over here below its launching point. So the delta y is negative 30 meters from the top to the bottom. We wanna find out delta x. Now we could find out v and get the components and put it all together, v y and v x. We're uh, not interested in that so much in this problem, we just want the delta x to make it kind of a, a quicker process. So I'm going to first show you the um, spread of variables in the chart, and then two strategies that you can use to attack this problem. One involves a piecemeal, um, kind of stitching together multiple facets. We can cut the problem into sections and glue them together. And the other one is a bit more direct, but is more complex slightly, but I think is a, a good way to show you what can be done with the equations of motion. So here we go. Ooh. And so once again, here's our matrix of projectile motion values, the variables here. Okay. Um, Here's our coordinate system, positive up, positive to the right. The angle is 60 degrees, theta is 60 degrees, our V naught is 20 meters per second. So that breaks up into VX naught and VY naught components. VX naught is V naught times the cosine of the angle 60 degrees, which gets us 10 meters per second. VY naught is V naught times the sine of 60 degrees or 17.32 meters per second. Um, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it actually has some properties that uh, you may have learned before in other classes, math classes, whatnot. Uh, this is half of the hypotenuse with the 30 degrees or the 60 degrees here on the short side, 20 meters per second. So we get 10 meters per second here. And the other one is the square root of three over two um, times 20 gives you 17.32. Uh, so there are some relationships here between right triangle trigonometry and the type of angles. And so we can see that pretty evidently right here. Other values are still the same. We've got VY peak, always zero meters per second. AY, which is the acceleration due to gravity. It's always 9.8 meters per second squared, negative due to our coordinate system, and AX is zero meters per second squared. So what we're gonna do, actually, again, is use this strategy here, try to find time, and by finding time, we can share it with the delta X side and find delta X, that's our ultimate goal. So strategy number one, here it comes. Up, up. And so strategy one involves us breaking apart the problem. Let's break it apart, okay? So that we can break this up into the rise and the fall. T rise and T fall from peak gives us T total, all right? Let's look at first T rise. We're at the platform and we wanna figure out the time that it takes to go up to the peak. And we'll, once we find that time, we'll add it to the time of the fall down to the water. So that's the strategy to get T total. Um, to find T rise, we've got VY peak, which is always zero meters per second. It's very useful in that regard. So we solve for T rise. T rise is negative VY naught over AY. And we get 1.77 seconds of time from here to here. All right, the next step is actually, we gotta find delta Y max. We gotta find out what the height is here so that we can add it to the height of the 30 meters all the way down to the water and figure out the time it takes to fall from that height to the water. So there's this other step here, this interim step to get delta Y max. And um, going through this process over here, we use the, um, the second equation. And remember from before, I'm kind of utilizing some of the relationships. We did this cool algebra to come up with negative VY naught squared over two AY. And uh, by plugging in the numbers, we get 15.3 meters at that moment. So that 15.3 meters is from here, from the platform, the cliff, all the way up to the max height so that the overall height is 45.3 meters, which is negative relative to our quarter system. So we'll take care of that when we have to do the next calculation. Okay, so we have this overall height and now we need to find the time of the fall. 
So that's part three, find T fall from the peak. This is a hafabula kind of situation. So here we are at the peak and the projectile, the, um, the croquet ball is falling from this point at the peak to the water. So I call this delta Y2. Um, again, we use the second equation with time in it. And this is zero, so that's, that's really cool. That, that's zero and it goes away. So we have one half AY T squared for the fall, okay? So you're probably recognizing some patterns. You're seeing this thing, this whole expression here, the square root of two delta Y over AY, all right? That's something you've probably seen a number of times in making this type of calculation for falling from rest. So essentially this is falling from rest from this moment here at its peak to the ground, uh, not the ground, but the water. 45.3 meters below, and so we crank this out. We get 3.04 seconds, and if we add that to the 1.77 seconds, like we've done over here, that's T total. T total for the overall projectile, okay, the croquet, um, the croquet ball, is 4.81 seconds till it splashes. And so what is delta X, the range? How far did it go? Well, it's VX naught times T total, or 10 times 4.81 seconds, 10 meters per second here. So we get 48.1 meters. So I'm gonna show you a way that's actually kind of quicker, but involves a little bit fancier math. It's within one step, it's worth seeing. This is three steps, I'm gonna condense that into one. So here we go, strategy two coming up. <clears throat> and so here it is, strategy two, the holistic approach. We can do this in one step, totally. Um, what I have here is an equation, the number two equation um, of our equation of motion, delta y equals v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. So from the very beginning, we have uh, delta y, we've got v y naught, we've got a y. So all these values are presented over here. And we can solve this in one step by using the whoo -hoo, quadratic equation. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay, check this out. It's actually going to come out pretty well. The one thing that I don't like about this method, it doesn't make any sense to me, because like your AP equation sheet has a bunch of great stuff on it, a bunch of constants, a bunch of things about right triangle trigonometry and the area of certain shapes and, and volumes, and it doesn't have this. It doesn't even have the quadratic equation. How lame is that? I am not happy about that, but, but this is a so much better method. So sometimes they're kind of hacks at what they do. I don't understand it, but I'm gonna show you this method regardless. So here we are. Um, okay, the quadratic equation. Well, notice the format here. If I manipulate this and solve here so that we have the equal zero on the end, I've got a t squared term, a t term, and a, a, a constant term, right? Equals zero. Well, that is the form of a quadratic equation. So before we really can't solve this in normal method, because most of the time we've had like a vy not equals zero. So this term goes away, we solve for t squared, we do a square root, beautiful thing. We can't do that when we have both these terms, but now we can. We've always had this kind of in our bag of tricks, the quadratic equation, we just never needed to use it. But in this case, it's gonna be pretty useful. So you might remember this from algebra one, perhaps, algebra two, t equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over two a, very useful here, okay? The coefficients in front of each of the variables, well, this one is a in front of t squared, this whole thing here, one half a y. This a standing for acceleration and this a for the constant. Um, v y naught is constant b and negative delta y is constant c, okay? So we organize stuff like this and the thing is about this is that we actually get two answers. One of them makes physical sense, the other is a negative number, which would be negative time, which doesn't make any sense, so we don't have to use that one. We only want to use the answer that makes sense, and that's gonna be the positive root. Um, and so in doing this, if you, get, if you do this for plus or minus here, the square root of b squared over four ac, uh, the minus four ac, we have um, the positive answer coming out as, yes, 4.81 seconds in one step, <laughs> got it, wham we win, we have this totally down, and we got the answer that we did in three steps and had to um, keep track of, okay, which height is it? Well, we add the max height to the, um, to the cliff and all that kind of stuff, whereas we have to be very careful. In this case, it's, it's one step and we can get the time of the overall flight from beginning to end by um, just using the quadratic equation, and we have delta x is vx naught times t, 
Again, 10 meters per second times 4.81 seconds, 48.1 meters, we get the same thing. So I don't really mind which method you use. That's totally up to you. I'd just like to show you the multiple options that are out there um, in ways that you can tackle the same problem with different approaches and get good results. So there we go. I'm just gonna post up the matrix and we're good. So more ad, out.